Goldie. Goldie Fishwater. Of the aquarium fishwaters. A very regal family. She was beautiful. Elegance personified. So beautiful. So many colors. I brought her into my home, and the other fish immediately hated her. I don't know. Maybe it was jealousy. It wasn't long before they acted on that feeling. I wasn't looking one day, and in a flash, a planned attack. It was brutal. It must have been horrible. Every one of her fins were ripped off. It was unbelievable. I was in shock. Her splendor left. Her will, too. She couldn't swim. She couldn't eat. I thought it was over. One day, though, one day I saw her use what she had left. A little bit of a fin. She used it to swim backwards. She was so strong. I cared for her day and night. Eventually getting her back to health. Her fins healed. But not her heart. Hey, Goldie. Hey. Don't be sad. Here, take a look. You are beautiful. You always were, no matter how you looked. See? Perfect. Come on, Goldie. Come on, Goldie. Come on. Take the bait, Goldie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love Goldie. And because of that, I want to protect her. I want to watch her. I want to make sure everything is done by me. Not by some automatic fish feeder that breaks. Here is Goldie's main attacker. Koi. Being rather coy. attacker. One of the problems I have with developing boards is how to organize all my parts, how to make sure they're not messy, which is just going to cause more problems down the line if it's a complete mess.
I bought a pretty novel way of organizing all my development boards and for this project, and I got it from Bud Industries. It's a it's a board organizer called Board Organizer, short for board organizer. The board organizer is a very simple open frame sort of enclosure. It says side panels and little X braces for supporting it. The kit comes with four pins for assembly and some adhesives that allow you to stick your development boards to the surface. Assembling is pretty simple. It's a Ziploc bag, but I tear it in half. You take the pins, you just stick them through. That's it. When you put all the panels together, it looks something like this. Okay, so the idea is is that you can create a sort of box. Put the last pin in. Not going to do it. Then you put these X braces in to create a. Uh, I will put it. I will put it. Put the X braces in to create the full enclosure. Enclosure is quite not the word since it's so open everywhere. Put all your boards in here, travel where you want to, whatever. This is the bad part. How do you get it apart? Now, this is definitely better than what I was doing before. The old, uh, the old, let's just zip strip everything to a piece of cardboard and, uh, and uh, hopefully it works out. Hopefully you don't drop it or it doesn't get set on fire. The board organizer has four different spots. You can put development boards, breakout boards, um, breadboards. So I want to put something like a uh, breadboard here. Maybe I would put a Raspberry Pi here, and then put some sort of other development board over here. I would just take the adhesive that's already punched in little circles. I would take them out and stick them to the back of the development board in the typical mounting location. Here are some things that you can attach to your board organizer. One, Raspberry Pi. One, Element 14 four-port USB hub. One, breadboard. One Goldie. I simply attach to the board, move these aside. Then I can go wherever I want with my Raspberry Pi. My only complaint about this would be that if I have a Raspberry Pi here and say a uh, another board here, breadboard in the middle, I got to string wires all in between them. And hey, we all know when you start folding wires up, it becomes a problem. But this is better than a piece of cardboard. That's all I got to say. Here's what a board organizer might look like with a Raspberry Pi attached to it. Then I could take this wherever I want to go. This is great and all. But I took it one step further. For the Goldie project, I needed more squares in the organizer to make it actually 
useful for my project. So what I did, what? I put, I took two Borganizers and I put them together for a mm, double Ganizer, I suppose. What I did was I took the pins that normally assemble the Borganizers and I put them, hold both of them together, mostly through friction. This is not, uh, this is not sanctioned by uh, Bud Industries or anything. Check it out. Double Borganizer mod. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the components of the Goldie project. But first, before I get into that, I just want to show you this is what happens when you fold up your Borganizer with long wires. They get mushed together like this into a crazy rat's nest. So please refer to the schematic on the project to know exactly what's going on here. But I'm just going to show you the components. Here we have the Raspberry Pi. Right here we have an Arduino Uno with the Arduino Uno motor shield on top. Right here we have the right here we have the Sane Smart 8 relay. I right actually up. cut this off of a, another project that I had, so you can see that I was controlling some AC before. This is going out to AC. This is the bi-directional logic level converter. Coming off of the motor shield, we have one stepper motor here, another stepper motor here. As you can see, for some of the components, I place them on screw down terminals just to make it a little bit easier for me to disconnect them or connect them as need be. I just I got tired of soldering as well. These two red wires right here are this black wire right here is the temperature sensor. All right, so now I'm going to show you some of the components at the dangerous end of my project. First of all, we have one stepper motor that does a full 360 degree rotation. This is going to work with the fish feeder. Thusly, you place this on, and then as this rotates, it will open up a trap door like that and feed the fish and then close back up. Also, the feeder stepper motor, I have fixed a 3M dual lock strip here and this clamp right here will attach to the side of the tank and you put both together and that way you have yourself a fish feeder. Here is my waterproof temperature sensor. These two right here are my Omron limit switches as you can see. Click click, click click. The best part, or I think the most ingenious part, about these limits. I fixed rare earth magnets to the back of each switch. I got the idea originally for a CNC machine I was working on, but with CNC you cut a lot of metal, a lot of ferrous metal, and it's just going to stick to the magnet. I didn't want to do that. So what would happen is, let's just say this is the distance you want to travel, and you want to keep it in there. So you attach one there, one here, so then as the as a platform would move one way, it would click, Move the other way, click the other way, so on and so forth. So that way it'll stop it from going too far one way or the other. This is the most dangerous part of my project. This is a power strip I modified so I can actuate the hot side of the AC signal. And finally, this is my moving platform that I'm going to use to attach the Raspberry Pi camera to so I can move it back and forth as need be. And as I said before, if I want to change the uh, limits, I'll just attach I want to set the limits, what have you. I just affixed the 12 volt stepper motor on the back that turns this drive belt, which is, which is permanently fixed to this platform, so it moves back and forth. Here's an interesting thing you might want to see. As I move this, I actuate the stepper motor which sends current back into the system, and you'll see that the relay board will activate. Kind of dangerous. Don't do that. If you can, just make some sort of way to disconnect the stepper motors from your board when you're not using it, or you need to move this around or something. Wired nests are dangerous for fish. Get out of there, Goldie.
Now for a quick demonstration of the motor features of the project. I've set the limit switches here at either end of the moving platform. The limit switches will keep the platform in this particular space. The limit switch stopped it from going any further there. And it stopped it from moving any further at that end. Now for the fish feeder portion. Finally, I could turn the relay on and off, also remotely. Okay, now I'm going to give you a better view of the overall system in operation by recording your desktop. So first of all, the system is at a certain IP address. In this particular case, it's local network. So the local network address for the Raspberry Pi is this number up here. So, enter. And there you go. It retrieves the temperature data, which is 74 degrees. My menu pops up on the side here. Let's show the temperature rising. I'm going to hold it in my hand here. Well, the temperature rises, I'm going to go over to VLC Me Player and I'm going to load. I'm going to start the video stream from the Raspberry Pi camera. I've opened up the Pi stream. Hey. All right. So here's the temperature sensor I was just holding. You'll find that there's a enormous delay in my voice and the video. That's just what you're going to get using VLC. Although I'm told that GStreamer is a little better, but didn't have time to implement that. Okay, I'm going to let go of the temperature sensor. Now I'm going to move the platform back and forth. That's one way it hit a limit switch and stop. Now I'm going to go the other way. Hit the other limit switch. I'm going to rotate the fish feeder motor. <laughs> awesome. Do that. Now I'm going to turn the relay on and off. Judging how well my reasonable facsimile Goldie is working out, this is going to be a good project. Now let's put it into now let's put it into real action. Now it's time to put Goldie in front of the Pi camera. To do that easier, I set out to replace the Pi camera cable 
with something a little bit longer so I don't have to move the entire project on the moving platform where I could just move the camera. It seems like a more logical idea. But as you can see, the Pi camera cable is pretty short. So I found a solution. Pi camera cable extensions from Alien Spec in the UK. This one right here is a one meter long Pi camera cable. But for this demonstration, I think I'm going to go a little bit further and I'm going to go with the two meter long Pi camera cable. So let me get that set up. So here's the moving platform. To do this easily, I'm going to use this part from a manual mini lathe to create a base for the moving platform. For the first demonstration, I'm going to put the moving platform sideways in front of the fish tank. It's going to be a low angled shot, but at least we'll be able to move back and forth between both sides of the tank. If I set the limits at either end to give me the maximum amount of range for the camera. The camera is attached to the platform on the front. As you can see. Now I'm going to attach the fish feeder. Okay, the system is running right now. Big problem though. You'll see that there is a, maybe you can see it in the reflection here, there's an intense Raspberry Pi camera light. It's red reflecting off the tank so you can see it in the camera shot. I'm going to mask that off so you won't be able to see it. Okay, I have the remote fish tank control system up and running. As you can see, Goldie's getting right into the camera. But what you can also see is the buffering that takes place here. Every so often, VLC is going to want to rebuffer, or at least the way that I have it set up here. It could be smoother using possibly GStreamer. I'm going to move the platform to the other side. See what Koi is up to. I must have hit a limit switch because it stopped. Koi is being Koi. Goldie's the one I want to watch, so I'm going to move back to the other side. It's a good thing I put in the limit switches because with the buffering going on, I don't know how far I'm traveling. There she is. The first test started pretty decently. Now I'm going to change the orientation of the platform from horizontal to vertical so I can see what's going on at the top of the tank and also see when I feed the fish you can see the pellets drop on the water level. That's the idea. This is precarious but at least it'll show up and down could be a possible option. This is definitely not the retail version. Now we're going to test the up and down option. Let's move up.
So here we can actually show the water stopping, which I'm going to do for now. There, I just turned off all the AC power. This way I can show, well this is what I do when I feed my fish. I shut off the power so at least they can have a little bit of quiet time while they eat. Let's move down a little. Right. Okay, we are going to dump some food from the fish feeder. Let's first move up a little so you can see it in action. All right, so here we go. Now we're going to test. And there we go. And Goldie's having some pellets. Oh no. temperature sensor was a little bit of a moot point. Since the water has been sitting in this room for days on end, weeks on end, it's going to be at room temperature. So whatever the room temperature is, in this particular case, 73 degrees, that's the temperature of the water. I'm going to move up out of the tank. Just to show the fish feeder and the AC portion. All right, so I think I've reached a limit on how high I can go up. I've taped the fish feeder shut so I can just show it in operation without feeding Goldie. I fed her, I overfed her during my testing here, so I taped it shut, but I can still show it rotating. You can notice the delay after I click versus how long it takes for that to roll. That food right here in this section is what would have just dumped in if I didn't tape it shut. All right, I'm going to turn off the AC power in the back. You'll see that the water will stop flowing. Let me rotate it again. All right, I'm going to turn the AC power back on. You'll notice the water will start flowing. All right, let's go back down in the tank and see what Goldie's up to. Here. 
what I would like to do is not only be able to go up and down, but also go f left and right. I imagine this, this like robotic arm that can go all around the tank and view every portion of it. I can view from the back, side, the top. It'd be pretty cool. That's a problem. I've been feeding her all day and she thinks every bubble is a food pellet. Now for my final thought. This is a great option for controlling your fish tank. This almost seems like a no-brainer. Watch your fish if you're a big fan of, if you have pet fish, this is a great way you can watch them. You can manually control their feeding, give them quiet time, turn off the ace, you know, every, all the pumps and bubblers and so forth. You can watch them anywhere in the world. You just have to configure your port forwarding using VLC or GStreamer. I can see this being a consumer product in the near future. It's just a logical next step when it comes to fish care. And I frankly welcome it. It's my love of Goldie, I think, that has inspired me to come up with something like this. And I think it's taking fish tech to the next level. I know there are some internet controlled fish gear, but there's nothing that's going to do exactly what I want it to do. I'm not into salt water or high maintenance fish. I'm really only into gold. So I think this is going to be a great idea. Maybe I should take it even further than this, make it into a real actual product. Maybe even start a Kickstarter. I don't know. It's really cool to watch Goldie remotely, but I'd rather do it right here. Time to go, Goldie. Don't worry. Hey, I have an idea. Come on. Let's go. <laughs>